Hi, I'm playwright Ken Urban, and I'm here to introduce my play, The Awake. The Awake is one of my favorite plays that I've written. Uh, I know you're not supposed to pick favorites of your own children, but it's definitely one that has a soft spot in my heart. I started the play, I kept track of my dreams for six months, and out of all that material that I, I wrote down every morning when I'd wake up, I found the three principal stories that end up becoming part of The Awake. The Awake follows three characters, Nate, Malcolm, and Gabrielle. Nate is a Canadian who finds himself trapped in a Guantanamo-like prison after NSA security guards visit his home. Malcolm, his mother, has suffered a stroke and he's visiting her in the hospital and tells himself the story that he and his mother are afloat on a bed in a flooded world as a way of dealing with that. While Gabrielle has learned what her husband does at work, and that knowledge forces her into her own imagination where she pretends to be an Eastern European film star uh, until she can no longer deal with that fantasy. So what you're going to see now is the three original cast members, Malik Pancholi, Andy Phelan, and Laurie Prince from the original 2013 production here in New York at 59 East 59 Theaters, uh, do short monologues from the play. It's really about a play about three strangers who find their lives connected through this mysterious corporation and why they try to hide in fantasy, they eventually have to deal with the reality of their lives. There's a song in the play called All My Days. And during this weird pandemic that we're currently experiencing, I re-recorded the song and Johnny Hager, my partner, sings lead vocals on the track. And Daniel Kluger, the sound designer and composer, helped me with some of the synthesizers and mixing the track and you'll see some images from that, this original production, the one in 2013, uh, at the end of the, of the clip. So thank you so much for listening and without further ado, The Awake. Answer all his questions. In this room at the police station where he's brought me, showed up at home, asked me to come with him. Across from the table from me, he sits. Where are you from? Think of my mom and dad. I call them mom and dad because I'm Canadian. This man is not. Asks again, where are you from? At the same questions again and again. I keep thinking of mom and dad. The look in their eyes when he came to the door. Wonder what they must be thinking, waiting for me at home. Catch sight of myself in the one-sided mirror. For the first time, see myself as he sees me. I see me as he sees me. His eyes tell me he's decided what I am. And in that instant, I know what's coming. A wave of sickness starts in my stomach and I close my eyes and imagine I'm somewhere else. Open my eyes. Uh, now I'm standing in front of a room full of kids at desks. <laughs> Far away from that room at the police station. No, this place, I know. <laughs> School. Oh, <laughs> I'm dressed, at least. It's not one of those dreams. No, I got away. I hand out the exams, a uh, foreign language exam and a foreign language I can't speak. <laughs> I crack a lot of jokes. One of the students laughs, <laughs> calls me Mr. Edward. I suddenly feel beloved by these students, even though I'm not their usual teacher, just a sub. As any high school teacher will tell you, it's not an easy thing to do. Be beloved when you're a, an interloper. An outsider. No, I belong. <laughs> then they start asking me questions about conjugation, uh, verbs, and prepositions, and everything that comes out of my mouth is gibberish. <laughs> One of the students sprouts antlers, and I feel something behind me. <sighs> Turn around and there's someone there, a, a figure in a hoodie. Can't see his face. I turn back to my students. Silent faces, and then turn back, and the figure's gone. 
face front. They're all gone. Stand alone in the classroom. No, 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 no. I'm safe here. I'm their teacher. I'm in control. Walk through the halls of the school. Faster now, trying to find my next classroom. Something's wrong. From the corner of my eye, I see a student pointing at me. His eyes vanish. Lips turn grimace. Features melt away. I start to sweat. Feel it trickle down my forehead. I ask the teachers if they have my exams, if they know where my classroom is. They stare. And in their eyes, I see myself reflected back. I turn. And there is the door. I can leave, escape, deep breath, in and out, and push the door. But before, feel a hand grab my arm. Trip. Trip, trip. Trip, trip, trip. Boom. Then a kind of swoosh. Like that, a swoosh. And I open my eyes. Water. The room is filling up with water on either side of the bed. Water's lapping. The windows are all cracked open. The snow melted suddenly. I don't know. Then I realize there's movement. The bed is moving, floating. The water, the current is moving the bed. And we are heading for the door, Mom. You should wake up now. Mom, Mom, the house, hold on. We're going to boom. The bed hits the door frame head on, but it's too big to fit through the door. I hear this big rush of water. I crawl to the end of the bed and I see it. The stairs, water's rushing down the stairs, creating a fall like some kind of log flume. I hear another rush. The window on the left's broken open. Water comes pouring in, creating a wave that pushes the bed sideways, spinning it around. Mom, hold on. And the force has moved the bed sideways. Then another wave pushes the bed again, dislodging it past the door frame. And now we are heading full speed towards the stairs. Oh, shoot. Shoot. And down we go, fast. The bed is cast down the stairs by the water. For a moment, I feel the bed go airborne above the torrent of water propelling down the stairs and we hit the wall at the um, the, um, landing, boom! We hit the wall and no longer airborne, the tide pushes us down the remaining stairs even faster. Water's hitting my face, but still the bed's floating. We aren't taking on that much water. And then in front of me, the front door, except the door's gone, been cracked by the force of the water and the current from the falls that were once the stairs of my parents' house pushes the floating bed with me and my mother out into the morning air, out into the front yard, which is no longer a front yard, but a vast ocean where nothing's visible except submerged trees. And in the distance, the submerged houses of the neighbors, and we are traveling. Me and my mom, and I turn and I, I see this, this, um, this sight, this wall of water that's forming behind my parents' home, and I hear the terrible crack, a caterwauling sound of the sheer massive density of water bursting over and through and under this house, forming a tidal wave, the likes of which I have never seen, and most likely the likes of which I will never see again because a human... Try as he might, cannot help but be awed by the impressive sight of nature unfurled. Even if he knows that this sight, this massive body of water speeding toward him, might in fact be the final sight he will ever see! I'm alone, standing in a familiar bedroom. No flames, no music. Must be a different movie. And in my hand is a picture, a photograph, found in the bottom of some drawer from a time when people took pictures with cameras instead of phones. And I look at this picture and something happens inside me. Robert enters the scene and sees me. It is my cue, time to cry. But I need no memory. The picture is my memory. I feel this, I don't know, this thing coming up in me, something burning in me, and I, shaking, remember this poem, the first line, tired and unhappy, you think of houses, and and this poem, it is all about how silly it is to dream of dull things like houses in snow, and the child, and the husband, but it is not silly, is it, and this feeling, Snow on houses, a girl's hand, 
my husband's stairs, the window of my bedroom, snow on houses, a girl's hands, my husband's stairs, the windows of my bedroom. I start to cry. Robert sees this and I think he is going to strike me, but no, he hugs me and I hold him, very tight hold him. There is something about this man, this Robert. I was so scared of him, but here he seems like a child. And I see in his eyes tears welling up like the tears when he dreams. And from my eye, I see the flames returned, but they spiral upward, sucked out of this world. And I feel people watching me, lights on me, but I hold him. I bury my face in his chest. I can smell his armpits, his body. I smell so real and I shake harder and my tears make my shirt wet and shaking, shaking harder. I try to stop myself but can't and it pours out of me everything and he hugs me tighter and there are these people clipping. From the corner of my eye I see the cameraman and the sound operator and the guest members and all these people. Everyone clipping and I cannot stop crying and some of them cry too and I shake and holding him won't let go. Won't. Won't. But the film crew starts to disappear. And know when I awake from this dream. I will be seated next to my husband, Robert, and our daughter, Celeste, my quiet, quiet daughter, Celeste, with her love of science, and my loving husband, Robert, with his job he'd rather not talk about, a job that gives me nightmares ever since I faced what he does there. A reality with no intrigue, no fingers in tin, no guillotines for lemons, no foreign actress in foreign films. This time when I wake, I will be home. Not a stranger to myself. I will be in my life again. It will be no movie picture. All my days, all my days, all my days away. Here we are, here we are, all my days away. Bye, fool.